This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course NE 273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hebbler. Today I'll be covering Chapter 6.6, .6, Frames and Machines. So after today, you will be able to draw a free body diagram of a frame or a machine and its members. And you'll also be able to determine the forces acting at the joints and supports of a frame or a machine. First, we'll look at some applications. We'll analyze the frame machine and we'll do some problem solving. Now, frames are commonly used to support various external loads. Today, we're going to investigate how a frame is different from a truss. And to be able to design a frame, obviously, you need to be able to determine the forces in the joints and supports. Now, machines, as you see here, are used in a variety of applications. And today we're going to discover how machines differ from trusses and frames. And of course, we need to determine the forces in the joints and support so we can design the machine's members. So frames and machines are two types of structures which are often composed of pin-connected multi-force members. That is, members that are subjected to more than two forces. Frames are used to support loads whereas machines contain moving parts and are designed to transmit and alter the effect of forces. Provided a frame or a machine contains no more supports or members than are necessary to prevent its collapse, the forces acting at the joints and supports can be determined by applying the equations of equilibrium to each of the members. Once these forces are obtained, it is then possible to design the size of the members, connections, and supports using the theory of mechanics of materials. So let's look at some steps for analyzing a frame or a machine. Uh, in order to determine the forces acting at the joints and supports, the structure must be disassembled and free body diagrams of each of its points must be drawn. Uh, the following points should be noted. Isolate each part by drawing an outline shape of the part. Then show all the forces and or couple moments acting on that part. Make sure to label each known and unknown force and couple moment with reference to an established XY coordinate system. Also indicate any dimensions used for taking moments. Most often the equations of equilibrium are easier to apply if the forces are represented by their rectangular comp. Identify all the two force members in the structure and represent their free body diagram as having two equal but opposite collinear forces acting at their point of application. By recognizing the two force members, we can avoid solving an unnecessary number of equilibrium equations. Forces common to any two contacting members act with equal magnitudes but opposite sense on the respective members. So as you can see here at this pen B, in this free body diagram we have it drawn in the first quadrant. And in this free body diagram, we have it in its opposite direction in the third quadrant. And it's very critical that you maintain that consistency. So let's do an example. Here we have a frame that supports an external load and a couple moment. Find the horizontal and vertical components of the pen reaction at C and the magnitude of the reaction at B. So we have two members here. We have this L-shaped member BC and we're going to draw a free body diagram of that and solve and use equations of equilibrium to solve for the answers. So free body diagram of member BC. So first you draw an outline of its shape and put in the uh, pen reaction at C. So we have C sub Y, C sub X, and we have the applied load of 400 newtons. And that's two and one meter away. We have a couple moment of 800 Newton meters. And this distance is one meter. Now we need the direction of F sub AB. And so it is on a one, three, uh, 10 triangle. So first we're going to sum moments about this point C because that'll get rid of these two unknowns. So let's do that. Summation of moments about point C is equal to zero, and that's equal to. Uh, first, let's look at FAB. 
Now it's best to break it up into its two components, right? F, A, B, sub Y, and F, A, B, sub X. And then it's easy to do the moment calculation. So first let's look at F sub A, B, X. It tends to want to rotate counterclockwise around uh, point C. So its X component is F sub A, B uh, times three over square root of 10. And it's one meter away and it's clockwise, so it's negative. The moment due to F sub A, B, Y also tends to want to rotate clockwise around C, so it's also negative, so minus F sub A, B. Now this time it's one over square root of 13. And it is um, two plus one, three meters away. We have the applied couple moment, so it's counterclockwise, so it's positive, so plus 800. And finally, we have the moment due to the 400 Newton force. It wants to rotate counterclockwise around C, so it's positive, plus 400 times 2. And from this, you get F sub A, B is equal to 843 Newtons. Now, here's our free body diagram again. We just solved for F sub A, B and came out to be 843 Newtons. So now let's apply our summation of forces equilibrium equation. So first I'll do the x direction, summation of forces in the x is equal to zero. It's equal to, now we have c sub x, and he has that pointing to the left. Um, I'm gonna change that, uh, because I always like to assume things in the positive direction just for clarity, so I'm gonna say cx is that way. So that means that the CX is positive, and then we have the component of this force in the X direction, and that's negative, so minus 843 uh, times three over square root of 10. So C sub X comes out to be 800 Newtons. Summation of forces in the Y direction, set that equal to zero. And also I'm gonna do the same thing with C sub Y. I'm gonna assume it is positive up so it would be uh, plus c sub y plus the component of this force in the y direction, which is positive. So plus 843 times 1 over square root of 10. And lastly, we have the 400 Newton applied load. And now we can solve for c sub y. It comes out to be 133 Newtons. Okay, let's do another one. Now we have a machine. It's a wall crane that supports this external load of 700 pounds. Find the force in the cable at the winch motor W and the horizontal and vertical components of pin reactions at A, B, C, and D. So we're gonna draw free body diagrams of the frame's members and its pulleys, and then apply the equations of the equilibrium to solve for the unknowns. So first I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of this pulley E. So E, uh, we have the applied load of 700 pounds and we have the tension in the cable. Now these are small massless pulleys, so the tension on either side of them is going to be the same. And this is a simple summation of forces in the Y is equal to uh, 2t minus 700 is equal to zero. So the tension in the cable is uh, 350 pounds. Now I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the pulley C. So we just solved for the tension. It's 350 pounds. 350 pounds. And we've got the pin reaction C sub X and C sub Y. So if someone forces in the X direction, it's clear that uh, C sub X is equal to 350 uh, pounds and C sub Y is equal to 350 pounds. Now let's do the pulley at uh, B. So if we buy a diagram of that pulley, that's just the pulley. So 350 pounds tension in the cable. Now it's 350 here, and this angle is 60 degrees. 
and we have the pin reactions B sub Y and B sub X. So summing forces in the X direction set it equal to zero. So we have uh, B sub X uh, minus the component of this 350 pound force in the X direction. So it's minus uh, 350 times cosine of 60. And lastly, we have the 350 pound force there. So it's plus 350. And from this, you get B sub X is equal to uh, 175. It's actually negative pounds. So B sub X points to the left. And summing forces in the Y, set that equal to zero. We have uh, B sub Y uh, minus the component of this force in the Y direction. It's negative, so it's minus 350 times sine of 60. And so B sub Y comes out to be 303.1, uh, just 303.1 pounds. So now I'm going to draw a free member of the member ABC. So we have the pin reactions at A. We have the force in member TBD, and that's shown here. It's at 45 degrees. We solved earlier for B sub X, got 175 pounds. We solved earlier for CX and CY and got 350 and 700. And this is a B sub Y. So first I'm going to sum moments about A, and that will get rid of those two unknowns, AX, AY, and they can solve directly for T sub BD. So summation of moments about A is equal to zero. So we have the component of TBD in the Y direction which is TBD times sine of 45, and it is uh, four feet away, so that's times four. And it tends to want to rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive. Now we have this 303 force here, it wants to rotate counterclockwise, it's negative, rotate clockwise rather, so it's negative, minus 303.1, uh, also times four. And lastly, the 700 pound force there, also wants to rotate clockwise, so it's minus 700 times 8. And from this, you get T sub BT is equal to 2409 pounds. Now we can sum forces in the x direction, set that equal to 0. So we have A sub x positive. We have the TBD component in the x direction. It's negative. TBD is 2409. So that's times the uh, cosine of 45. And uh, we had the 175 pound, that is plus 175, and minus 350. So from this you get A sub X is equal to 1880 pounds. And lastly, some forces in the Y, set that equal to zero. So we have A sub Y, plus the component of this force in the y direction, it's positive, so it's plus 2409 uh, times sine of 45. And we have this force here, it's negative, minus 303, and this force here, minus 700. And solve for a sub y, comes out to be minus 700 pounds. So a sub y is pointed down. So the last thing to do is look at pen D. So let's draw a free body diagram of that. It's uh, pen D. So we have uh, D sub Y, D sub X, X, Y. And we have the force in member DB, which we just solved for to be 2409. And that's at 45 degrees. So some forces in the X direction, set that equal to zero. So we have D sub X positive plus 2409 times cosine of 45. So D sub X is minus 1700 pounds. And some forces in the Y set that equal to zero. So that is uh, positive D sub Y minus 2409 times the sine of 45. So DY comes out to be plus 1700 pounds. This concludes the lecture on Chapter 6.6, .6, Frames and Machines. The next video is moving into Chapter 7, 
7.1, internal loadings and structural members. See you in cyberspace.